I don't believe it. Who's done this? Well, our kids, I suppose. Nobody seems to know. That graffiti won't come off. Oh, don't worry. We'll cover it up with something. Well, they could have at least waited until we were up and running. Some grand reopening this is going to be. Oh, it'll be all right. All right, from Sierra Oscar receiving. Go ahead, Matt. You expected all right, Honourable Stephen Hadley, MP? Yeah, in about half an hour. Not anymore, you're not. Just had a call from his place. Some accident, apparently. OK, Matt. Received. Gee, that sounds pretty serious. Do you think I should check it out? Yeah, Stephen wouldn't have missed this for the world. You go and I'll take over here. Thank you, sir. Baby, Junior, it's terrible in the front room. Uh, go to your room, George, and play. Just, just, just. I need to check him. Just let your baby go in, please. It's too late. No, please, they need to check him. I'm fine, right, no, just let him go. Let him go, just for a minute. You can have him back. Please, good girl. please. They need to look at him. Good girl. Well yeah, done. Yeah, that's it. Well done, well done. All right, all right. There, it's all right, it's all right. How did it happen, sir? I, I don't know exactly. I, I was upstairs. When you must have tipped out of the chair onto the floor. He's dead, isn't he? Okay, Sarge, I'll pass it on. It's nice to talk to you. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Stephen had his babies just died in the accident, so. Oh, no. Yes, thanks, Marsha. Right, better make a start now. Okay, everybody. Uh, good afternoon, and thank you for coming to what is a very, very special relaunch of the Larkmead Centre. On a sad note, I'm sure that most of you will have noticed we're missing one very significant person today. Our MP, Stephen Hadley, is unable to attend due to a personal bereavement. I know, it's a big shame that Stephen's missing all this. He's worked tirelessly with the residence committees to get this project up and running. And as Stephen himself would have said, this is only the start. But as I'm sure you noticed earlier, we've already had some comedians round putting their uh, seal of approval all over the place. But as far as I'm concerned, that only goes to show how far we've got to go to get our kids to feel proud of their surroundings. Watch them. We in the police force are committed in every way possible to making the Larkmead a safer and more enjoyable place to live. But we can only do that with you, the community, working in partnership with us. It's OK, folks. I always save the cabaret till last. <laughs> God. Yeah? A sudden infant's death's just come in. The local MP's baby. Oh, great timing. I'm just on my way back to court. I'll look after things till you get back, Gov. No problem. I don't know, Debbie. I'll be very sensitive. I wouldn't want you getting out of your depth. I won't. Is Vic in today? No, he's off sick and he won't be in all week. I'll be fine. June Atkins at the scene. Is she? Okay then. See so if she'll help you out with the statements. But any glitches, you call me, right? Of course, Gov. No problem. Oh, are you alright with you? He asked me to handle things for now. Yeah, listen. It's uh, it's pretty traumatic in there. Yeah. And also, we ought to get Mrs. Headley and the baby down to the hospital in order for death to be certified. Let me take out the scene first, eh? Through here, is it? Yeah. Hi. I'm so sorry. It must be a terrible shock. And uh, this is Fiona. Hello, Fiona. Can you tell me what happened? 
it was an accident. The seat fell over and... Uh... Come on, George, let's play in the garden, eh, mate? How did it fall over? It looks fairly sturdy. I I'm not sure. See? We should take Nathan to the hospital now, Fiona. Get up, just leave us! Right. I think we should leave the questions to later. <laughs> Sign of them, sir. Did you get a good look at them? Mostly a bunch of IC3s, I think. Marsha, do you know the kids that did this? Why? Because they're black? No, because I thought you might have seen them around. They're just kids, aren't they? I don't know names. Oh, come on, Marsha. I know that you've spoken to June Ackland about this in the residence meeting. If you can help us identify the culprits, we can take action. Mum, you helping or what? Look, it's all right for you and the Stephen Hadleys of this world. We have to live amongst these thugs. Hard going, isn't it? Yeah. Maybe that's always are. Worse for the parents, of course. How well do you know Stephen? I've met him a few times. He's involved in the Lartme project. He's a good MP. He works really hard on the estates. Are you treating this as suspicious? Why? Should we be? Well, the bruising to the back of the head looks pretty nasty. Well, the parents say that the baby fell out of its chair onto the floor. I don't think so, with that amount of damage. What could have happened, then? Looks to me like the baby was thrown. Sorry. We'll see what the post-mortem concludes. Uh, June. Um, we'd, uh, we'd better get going now. We don't want to leave George too long with a neighbour. Mr Hadley, we need to get some statements back at the station. What, now? I'm afraid so. Couldn't we do it at home? <sighs> I'm sorry. That's the way it's got to be. I'm just glad you're involved, June. Matthew, is June still with the Hadleys? As far as I know, sir. Oh, I could really use her down the Larkmead right now in case any more trouble breaks out. It already has, sir. Marsha Harris rung in. Her flat's been rearranged now. You're kidding. How long ago? Half hour or so. Who's on it? Well, I can't spare anyone at the moment, sir. A fight's broken out at the Bear's Head. Football thugs. I want Tony Stamp and Ben Haywood down there as soon as they're free. Thank you. Sir? I'll sort out a couple of interview rooms, sir. Well, we've been interviewed separately. We need to take individual statements, yes. You know that, Fiona? Well, where do we go? Uh, why don't you come down to the Sergeant's office? Stephen. Oh, hello, Tom. I'm so sorry, Fiona. Thank you. Uh, we're about to take statements, sir. Right. Can I have a quick word, Jane? Mm -hmm. uh, would you like to take a seat? Excuse us. What's happening? Why are they here? The baby's death is looking suspicious, sir. Are you sure? What have you got? The doctor thinks he may have been thrown. Have you handed over to CID? Yeah, Debbie McAllister's dealing with it. Why? What's wrong with Alex Cullen? Crown Court, apparently. I thought I'd better stay with the Hadleys for now. I'm sure Debbie's perfectly capable, but it's a bit of a delicate situation. No, you're right. I think you'd better stick with it. Just keep me updated. And please do keep an eye on Debbie. I'm relying on you, Jim. Shut up all the furniture. Let's have a look. Some sort of pellet gun. You think it could be a racial thing, Marsha? 
Because our community safety unit will want to know if it is. I mean, we take this kind of thing very seriously. So seriously you took an hour to get here? Stephen Hadley rings up you straight round. I think you should leave that as it is, love. Our IC might be able to get some prints from it. Sorry, but I ain't staring at this a minute longer. Tony, isn't that tag the same as one at the community centre? Could be, I suppose. Players. That's a rat word, isn't it? Clever, ain't you? I live around here. Get you this. Is it the same gang that set fire to the bins? You must know who they are. They're about your age, aren't they? Look, we'll sort it ourselves, all right? That's our job, son. <sighs> Mum, time your mates left. Shut it, all right? Look, it's you sucking up to them. It's cool, Rose. Marsha, do you think we no, can... Will you go now, please? Hey, well, hang on, Marsha. You'll need our report, won't you? What for? Your insurance claim. <laughs> insurance? Insurance is what you might call a luxury. Hey, that Jerome knows more than he's laying on, do you think? We're cops, man. What do you expect? And do you notice the colours on the graffiti? Jamaican. And that tag, players. It's got to be a black gang thing, don't you think, Tony? I don't know. I'm not into rap, then. It was an accident. The high chair tipped over and Nathan fell onto the floor. So you were in the living room and you saw the chair tip over? Well, I was on my way out and I heard the crash. Was anyone else in the room? No. How did the chair tip over? Nathan was crying. He's been teething. He must have done it himself. Mrs. Hadley, are you absolutely sure your son's death was an accident? Why? The doctor felt the bruising on Nathan's head was too severe to be accidental. Tell us what really happened. He fell. He fell. Are you absolutely sure? Someone picked Nathan up, didn't they, and threw him. Was it you? <laughs> <laughs> It was Stephen. He was really wound up by Nathan's crying. He picked him up and threw him across the floor. There was nothing I could do. So you're now saying you saw your husband pick up your son and throw him across the floor? <laughs> right, I, uh, I think we'll, I think we'll take a break there. Yes. What a result! All we need now is a confession. We can't leave it there. Will you just stop the interview? Yeah, because you backed her into a corner. So you don't believe her? Well, I can't draw any conclusions from that interview. You pressurised her throughout. She said she saw him do it. I think we should wait for the DI to get back. You're joking! It's in full swing in there! We at least have to tell Mr Chandler about this new allegation. What for? We can sort this out ourselves. We don't need Big Brother holding our hand. If it's difficult for you, June, I'm sure I can find someone else to help. Why should it be difficult for me? Because you've obviously got a certain impression of the Hadleys. Listen, I am quite capable of being objective. I know. I just don't want you feeling uncomfortable, that's all. I don't. OK. Look, we have to put the allegation to Stephen, don't we? Let's see how he reacts and we take it from there. All right. But we play it by the book from now on. Sorry to have kept you. How's Fiona? Uh, she's all right. Uh, an officer's looking after her. It's a nightmare. This morning I was feeding Nat his breakfast. He got it everywhere. His hair, and his face, everywhere. Mr Hadley, a serious allegation has been made against you concerning your son's death. Now, you're not under arrest, but we'd like to take the interview. Well, what's been said? June, is Fiona saying I've done something to Nathan? Well, Stephen, I really do think it would be a good idea if you called a solicitor. Look, come with me. You can use the phone in the sergeant's office. <laughs> you, don't, you don't believe her? You can't! This is ridiculous. I, uh, Fiona's extremely vulnerable. She doesn't know what she's saying. Yeah, all the more reason why you should protect yourself. You know what will happen if this gets out, June? I mean, I'll be torn apart. I'm torn apart. 
Tom, thank God. Will you please put an end to this madness? Stephen's been accused of causing his baby's death. That wasn't even in the room, Tom. I mean, it makes no sense at all. If an allegation's been made, it'll have to be investigated, I'm afraid. Well, so you're not going to help? I'm sorry, Stephen. I really do think it'd be in your best interest to cooperate. What, you mean you're taking this seriously? Please phone your solicitor, Stephen. Jim. How's Debbie handling this? All right. Please tread carefully, Jane. I don't need to remind you of the consequences of pursuing a false accusation. You won't get anything out of them. Uh, I was wondering if you knew anything about the players' game. What's it to you? A flat's been done over on the estate. Marsha Harris. Do you know? No, no, no. no, no. What about her son, Jerome? And if he makes. Who, Jerome? Quiet, Yes, It's a lost battle. But no fancy words from Charles and the change of scene. <laughs> After breakfast, I um, read the papers, went through the post, did some work. Uh, then we had lunch, um, at about two-ish, I went upstairs to get ready for the Larkmead opening. Which is when Stephen is saying the incident occurred. Is that right, Mr Hadley? Fiona shouted for me and um, I went down and saw Nathan lying on the floor. Were the family going with you to the Larkmead? Uh, they were supposed to, but uh, we were running late. Were you annoyed by this? Not particularly. We're always running late. Fiona says the baby was playing up. No more than usual. So the crying wasn't bothering you? I was in the bathroom upstairs. I couldn't hear it. But you just said you heard Fiona cry out. She screamed for me. When you went into the living room, where was Fiona? She was lying on the floor trying to revive Nathan. And what did you do? I called an ambulance. When was the... Last time you picked Nathan up? I can't remember exactly. Well, you must be able to. It was only a few hours ago. If you've been tackling my wife like this, it's no wonder she's been making crazy accusations. I'm just trying to establish what happened. I've told you what happened. Oh, I don't have to put up with this, do I, Sam? No. Unless you intend to press charges, may I remind you that Stephen is free to leave here at any time? Stephen, I realise... This must be very difficult for you, but I'm sure that you don't want to leave here with an allegation like this hanging over your head. For your own sake, please, stay here and help us to clear this up. We want to hear your side of the story. OK. Thank you. Have you got any idea why an allegation like this should have been made? No. Fiona told me it was an accident. Nathan's injuries were too severe to be accidental. What do you mean? The doctor believes he was thrown to his death. How do you explain that? Well, I can't, can I? But if anybody threw Nathan, it must have been Fiona. She was the only person in the room. I think that's more than enough for now, Sergeant. Did you enjoy winding him up in there? Of course not. I was just cutting to the chase, that's all. Debbie, you are putting them both under so much pressure that we can't rely on anything they're saying. June, Fiona says she saw Stephen throw the baby. That is cast iron evidence. Let's get back to the office and check with forensics. This about. I told you, look, just mind your room. What's your name? Carlo Luca. What's yours? Lee. Or Luca. What was the fight about? Nothing. That Jerome's got it in for us. Why is that then? I don't know. We weren't doing nothing. But is that his gang? Yeah, he thinks he's top man. He's a pussy, ain't he, Carlo? He's nothing. Alright, cheers, lads.
There you go. All makes sense now. Jerome's gang must be rivals with this players' lot. That's why their place was done over. Yeah, it looks that way. Well, it's a territory thing. Come on, another word with Jerome's in order. The baby definitely landed several feet away from where the high chair was found. The SE said there was marks all around the fireplace. It's all in there anyway. Great. The pathologist confirmed that the most likely cause of death was by throwing. Be all down to the DNA then. Well, we can't wait for that. Danny not back yet? Well, no, he's still checking with the neighbours. Right. You ready to go again with Fiona? Mm-hmm. You can lead if you want. Thanks. OK, sir. Well, it beats Nanny in the plods, eh, June? Have you updated the DI yet? Uh, Sam? Yeah? Be an angel and uh, ring the DI and tell him not to bother back. It's um, all in order. Yeah, sure. All right, see you later. Right. Now, in your previous statement, you start off by saying that Nathan fell out of his high chair onto the floor. Yes. Why did you say that? I was scared of Stephen. Really? Does Stephen lose his temper often then? You know? Sometimes he'll just flip. For the smallest of reasons, he'll just lash out. at you and the kids. Just me, until today. Does anybody else know about this? No. So how long has this been going on? Since George was born. OK, let's just stick with today. Take us through what happened again. We were late for the Larkmead opening. George was playing up. Nathan was crying and Stephen was shouting at us all. George went out into the garden to play. And as I was leaving, Stephen and Nat in the living room, I heard a thud. You're saying you didn't actually see Stephen throw Nathan? As good as. He picked him up yelling. He threw him. He must have thrown him. Look, this is really important, Fiona. Did you or did you not see Stephen throw Nathan? Well, no. But he was there and I heard it. I heard the thud. Isn't that enough? I, no. No, it's not. Stephen's denying even being in the room. Well, he's lying. Fiona, what about your little boy? Could he have seen Stephen from the garden? No. How do you know? Because he was in his den, hiding. He always goes there when Stephen's upset. We'll have to talk to him anyway. No, definitely not. He's got to be protected from this. OK, now we need to make a record of your new statement. No, I can't. I need time to think. to change her mind. I wasn't. I want her to be very clear about what she's saying. She changes the story every time we talk to her. But Stephen did it, definitely. How can you say that? Because it's a violent relationship and today he chose to take it out of the baby. Yes, but only according to Fiona. And now she's saying she didn't even see him do it. I need a confession from Stephen, that's all. Debbie, has it ever occurred to you that Fiona could be trying to pin this on Stephen? What, you think... You think it's possible she could throw her own baby? I don't know, but I think we should keep an open mind. I also think it would be a good idea to interview the boy. It will take too long. What we need is Stephen to confess. That's our best chance of a result. Debbie, do you want a result or do you want the truth? Oh, of course. Danny, how to get on with the neighbours? Good, Sarge. The woman next door said the Hadleys never stopped rowing and they had a real Barney around about two o'clock. Thanks, Danny. So Stephen forgot to tell us about the row, didn't he? Mr Hadley, we've just received information that you and your wife were rowing around two o'clock. I was concerned the children weren't ready for the lark meet. So you were shouting? No more than Fiona. After the row, your wife claims it was she who left you in the room alone with Nathan. She's sick. And I can't believe you're taking her word for it. How do you mean she's sick? Oh, it's some sort of postnatal thing. She, she doesn't know what she's doing, let alone saying half the time. Have you ever been violent with your wife, Mr Hadley? Stephen is only prepared to answer questions regarding his son's death. 
this is outrageous. She's the crazy one. Are you saying that Fiona is violent with you? Yes. She's jealous of everything, of my achievements, of my relationships in the community, and she's made absolutely no effort whatsoever to fit in. So now she's got her way, hasn't she? Because I will be completely unelectable once the rumour mill gets going. Stephen, to your knowledge, has your wife ever been violent towards the children? Fiona was the only person in the room with Nathan. I was upstairs. How many times do I have to say it? But your wife is just as sure that you weren't. Come on, Stephen, tell us what really happened. Right, I've had enough of this. I came in here in goodwill to make a statement about my son. And what do I get, Fred? Not an ounce of sympathy. And no one's believing a word I say. Now, you listen to me for once. I am not going to say another word until you get Tom Chandler down here. Now. Still trying to work out who did this, Marsha. Well, I won't hold my breath. Nothing ever gets solved around here. All right, Cassie. Jerome, not in. He's out with his mates. His gang. He's not in a gang. Are you sure? I think I know my own kids. Jerome? Mm. Out of battle scars. You what? Jerome was involved in a bit of a scuffle earlier, weren't you, mate? Were you? There was nothing. We think that his gang were at odds with another black gang, this player's lot. Yeah, that's why your place was done over, wasn't it, Jerome? In retaliation. I don't believe this. Look at the colours on the tag, Marsha. Green, black and yellow. Those are Yardie colours, aren't they, Jerome? And what? Now, you listen to me. Just because my son has mates of his own colour doesn't mean he's part of all this gang rubbish. No, we're just no, So you can take this racist crap back where it belongs, which isn't in here. Now, get out. Look, Mrs. No, Harris. Get out, the pair of you. I'm getting straight on the phone to Mr Chandler about this. Evening, sir. Is that right? The Hadleys have been held here. Uh, yes, well, uh, I think you should speak to Sergeant McAllison, sir. No. No, yes, of course, it's perfectly understandable. Yep, I will speak to them. No, not at all. Thanks for calling. Bye bye. Marsha Harris, it seems that Messrs Stamp and Haywood haven't been doing much for Lark Mead relations. Oh, really? Mm. How's things with you, Jim? One of the Hadleys must have done it, sir, but under certain pressure, they've both come out fighting, blaming each other. Right, I take it Debbie's not been at her most diplomatic then. We're not going to get a confession out of Stephen, that's for sure, and now he's demanding to speak to you. I can't be seen to be pulling any strings, Jim. No, 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 of course not. I understand that. But I'm afraid that if you don't speak to him, then we might lose him. You seen the press out there? I'll tell him that you're not available then, sir. Look, would you have a quiet word with him? See if you can talk him round. I'll give it a go. Thank you. I told you to keep me briefed. I did ask Sam Harker to ring your mobile. Sam Harker? You should have called me yourself. Sorry, Garth. I'll leave here asking you to take a couple of statements and I'll get back to find the station under siege. Well, that's not down to me, is it, Garth? I don't need this, Debbie. I still think we can get a result here. Fiona's just about to complete her statement and Stephen's bound to crack eventually. How long have you had them here? Only a couple of hours. And how much does Mr Chandler know? He's asked you to keep him up to speak, Garth. Right. OK, Debbie, I'll take over now. Gov? I was expecting Tom Chandler. I tried. He's not available, I'm afraid. He's cooperative enough when he wants something. Stephen, none of us are above the law. Your actions have to be investigated just like anybody else's would be in this situation. I know that, June. But you don't seriously think I'd kill my own baby, do you? It doesn't matter what I think. Oh, come on. My whole world's falling apart. I'm being accused of the worst possible things and I don't understand why no one's believing me. All right, well, look. Put yourself in our situation. You've already admitted that you and Fiona were rowing around the time that Nathan was killed. It's obviously a very problematic relationship. I mean, anything could have happened in the heat of the moment. I'm not saying we don't row. What couple doesn't row? But you know me, June. 
You see me with the kids down at the Larkmead? I love children, and I'd never, ever do anything to harm my own. But would you hurt Fiona? Not like she's making out, no. She's a very sick and spiteful woman. I just didn't realise how much until today. I'm sorry about that, Stephen. I honestly am. But you will only make yourself look guilty if you leave now. Jean, anything new? No, but he's looking more and more like the wronged man. Look, time's running out. I think we should tie up Fiona's statement. Is the DI back yet? He's in with Mr Chandler, but he won't want us sitting around. All right. Thanks. Fiona, you all right? I want to withdraw the allegation against my husband. Why? Because I can't stand any more of this, and it's only going to get worse. Right, look, I know you've been under a great deal of pressure, but are you now saying that Stephen wasn't responsible for the death of Nathan? No, I don't know. I only said he did it because you were pushing me. All right, Fiona, look, I want you to think very carefully. Did you leave Stephen alone in the room with Nathan or not? Yes. But I didn't actually see him do it, did I? Who's going to believe me? Fiona, it's been a really traumatic day. If Stephen is guilty, then don't give up. I want to go now. I've got to get back to Georgie. Don't make any decisions now. Sleep on it, and then we'll talk again in the morning. No, I won't. I can't do it. I want it all to stop now. Yeah, all right. Uh, can you wait here and give us a minute? What am I going to tell the DI? I wouldn't worry about it. The allegation was always questionable anyway. You've been on Stephen's side from the off. <sighs> You're letting this get to you. Save it for the plot, June. Right, gentlemen. I've had Marsha Harris on the phone. She is alleging that you conned your way into her flat and accused Jerome of all this vandalism just because he is black. With respect, sir. I think she's been a little oversensitive. Uh, it was my fault, sir. I thought the graffiti was a black culture thing. Well, what are we supposed to do? Not suspect black kids in case it upsets them? That's not really the point, is it, Tony? There are ways and means of doing things, and at the end of the day, we have to keep an open mind. We are trying to build relationships with the Larkmead, and Marsha Harris is crucial to that process. She's worked hard at project partnerships, and she is a bridge to the black community. Yes, Sita. Sergeant Ackland needs to speak to you, sir. It's urgent. Yeah, tell her I'll be with her in two seconds. Thank you. I'd like to go and apologise, sir. It's a good idea, Ben. But why don't you hang fire and let me smooth it over first? Thank you. What were you doing talking to Mrs Hadley again? I told you I was taking over. Well, Sergeant Acklam wanted to tie up the statement, Scuff. Actually, sir, Fiona had made up her mind before we even got in the room. Not good news, I take it. Mrs. Hadley's withdrawn her allegation and refuses to cooperate further. Right. Why don't we use this as an opportunity to regroup? Send them both home and then we'll look at our options in the morning. Debbie, why don't you take Fiona home? All right, sir. Alex, perhaps you could break the news to Stephen and then brief the press afterwards. Sure. Thank you. Sir, do you think it's safe to let the Hadleys return home together? We haven't got any choice. Well, I could suggest to Stephen that maybe he spent the night somewhere else. No, they'll be fine. And to be honest, I need you down the Larkmead right now, if that's OK. Oh. Thank you. You'll be relieved to hear that the allegation made against you has been withdrawn. Thank God. I take it we can go, then? For today, yeah. Where's Fiona now? She's been taken home. Well, this must be quite an ordeal for you. That's putting it mildly. Well, as you can imagine, there's a lot of press activity outside. If you like, we can sneak you out the back in an unmarked car. Oh, I'm perfectly happy to go out the front. I have nothing to hide. I know Tony doesn't rate the boss's strategy, but I think he's right. Positive policing is the only way forward, don't you reckon, Serge? Ah, oh, Mr Chandler certainly likes things done his way, that's for sure. Yeah, we'll take Marsha, for instance. I have to tread very carefully, Sarge. I mean, she's obviously very sensitive. Ben, have you got any idea how many years I've been knocking on these doors, mopping up victims? Oh.
Our inquiries will continue, Mr. Hadley. We have to report to the coroner's office. Of course. They're ready for you. I'll send my regards to Mr. Chandler. I'm sorry we weren't able to discuss this. I'm sure you'll understand I'm unable to answer any questions at this point. All I want to say is that although my wife and I have lost our baby son in a tragic accident, the situation must be investigated like any other. I would ask you to please respect our grief. Thank you very much. It's all right, I'm home now. Do you want me to come with you? Please. Where's Nathan's chair? It's gone for examination. The investigation will continue, Fiona. I completely understand why you dropped the allegation. But if you change your mind and call me. Please, will you go now? You sure? Stephen and I had to try and rebuild things somehow, for George's sake. We can't do that with you here. You lot want to move in or something? I want to apologise, Marcia. I should think so. Can we come in? PC Stamp and Ben really didn't mean to cause offence. If you say so, Jim. Ben? Uh, Jerome, I'm really sorry about earlier. I jumped to conclusions. I suppose I couldn't understand why you didn't want to help us find out the kids that did all this. We just want a bit of peace now. Sure. Hi, Cassie. Is that your car outside? Mm-hmm. It's been done over. I know those kids, Sarge. No, Ben, wait for backup. Sarah Oscar from 4-8. Urgent assistance required. Allow me. He's up there, Sarge. What do you want? We just seen two boys wrecking our car and firing a gun. One of them came in here. Well, they aren't you now. What's your name? Mrs. Shell Luca. Is this your son's room? Well, it ain't mine. So what's all this about? Well, it seems I was right about the black gang thing, Sarge, but with the uh, white kids doing it. Yeah, God knows why. Wiggers is a name for it, apparently. Did your son escape through here? Well, how should I know? Look, if he's got a gun, this is really serious. It's only a toy one. Oh, what do you think you're doing? Come in. Sir. Debbie. Um, you asked to see me? Yes, I wanted to talk to you about what you think happened today. Well, the Hadleys are very unstable people, sir. They just lost a baby. Yes, sir, but June and I... I'm not interested in June. You were the officer in charge. Now, as I understand it, your approach set fire to what was already a volatile situation. Well, am I right? No, I don't think so, sir. Oh, really? Well, Debbie, as a young, newly promoted sergeant, if you want to make a go of it, you've got to start facing up to your mistakes and learning from them. Yes, sir. So if you've got half the potential I think you've got, you'll get out there and salvage this situation. I will, sir. Thank you. You think she's up to it? Yeah, she'll be all right with supervision and a bit more experience. I should think she'll want to do even better after this. 
All right. Thanks, mate. Tony. Any sign? Nah. They'll be hiding under a stone somewhere. They've got to go home sometime. Right, Ben, you stay looking here and uh, I'll go and update Marsh. Sure, such. I think you've done more than enough social work for one day. We're pretty sure that the Lucas are responsible for all this. Well, as soon as we find them, we'll arrest them. Don't expect we'll see our stuff again, Ma. Jerome, you don't have any idea where the boys might be hiding out, do you? No. We just saw Stephen Hadley on the news. Something about his baby dying? Yeah, he and his wife are helping us with the inquiries. You must know him quite well working on the partnership project with him. What do you make of him? It's all right, I suppose. Only all right? I thought everybody around here loved him. He always seemed so friendly. To be honest with you, June, it wouldn't surprise me if he had done something to that poor baby. What do you mean? You won't believe it, June. Try me. Well, when I first started working on the youth project, Stephen came on to me. Yeah? Well, at first I didn't know for sure if he meant it. I thought, why would he go for me? If he fancied a bit on the side, he could have anyone he wanted. Then one night after a meeting, he insisted on walking me home. He seemed really concerned. And to be honest with you, June, I was flattered. And I know I shouldn't have, but I invited him in for a drink. You go on. Well, he hardly got through the door when he made his move. I managed to push him off, but then he got really nasty. And grabbed me by my hair, shouting the odds. And then, thank God, Jerome came through. If Jerome hadn't been there, I don't know what would have happened. You should have reported it. Come on. Who's going to believe a black single mum over someone like him? Well, I do. If you want to go ahead and press charges, then I'll support you all the way. Nah, I just want to forget about it. Are you right, mum? Yeah, I'm fine, Jerome. You got a good one there, Marsha. I'll be off. Dear McAllister. Hello, Debbie. It's June. Has Stephen Hadley returned to the family home yet? As far as I know. Why? Yeah, it's just that I'm at the Larkmead. I've been reliably informed by a resident that he recently assaulted her. You're kidding. Yeah, I'm very concerned about Fiona. Well, I'll pick you up at the community centre. Seems quite enough. June. I need to see Fiona. Oh, uh, she's sleeping. I'm I afraid. don't believe you. But she's asleep. No. Fiona's asleep. Fiona, she's are you asleep. up there? Taking some pills. Fiona! I won't have a disturb. Please don't disturb her. Fiona. Stephen has. Go, go and sit there. Sierra Oscar from 48. Ambulance required. 22 Siskin Square. She shouldn't have blamed me. It wasn't me. Oscar. Stephen Hadley, I'm arresting you for assault. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Stephen wanted to know why I said it was him. It wasn't, was it? I only said it was George to stop him hitting me. George? Nothing will happen to him, will it? He's too young. Was he upset because of you and Stephen rowing? It wasn't his fault. Stephen was yelling at me to stop that crying. All right. 
<laughs> Just take your time. George started whining. And I... I just lashed out at him. <laughs> I left the room to calm down. And, and then I heard the thud. I rushed straight back in, but it was too late. That was lying there, not moving. Okay, 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 okay. And George was running outside. <laughs> Done. He still does it. Nothing. Uh, might be too long now. I'm getting too cold for him to be hanging around the streets. Hey, Jerome. Do you not with you? No, she's been called away. Can I help? Tell her there's a surprise waiting for her down the playground. <laughs> <laughs> so we can trust Jerome. What do you mean? It's beginning to feel like a wind up. <laughs> you should be more trusting, Tony. This is what you call working in partnership with a local community. Well, that's Stephen booked in for the night. Good. We wrapped it up in the end, June. Yeah, more by luck than judgment. No, don't put yourself down. Are you proud of your conduct today? I'm more than proud of the result, yes. Well, I tell you this. It'll be a cold day in hell before I clean up after you again. Great results all round today. Well done. You must feel very gratified. Hmm. How is Fiona? Uh, more relieved than anything, I think, sir. Hmm. No, I do feel bad about that. You were right. We should have made sure she was absolutely safe. Well, we can't protect her if she doesn't want to be protected. No, but I'll be listening to you more closely in the future. You're a great asset to Sun Hills, you know that. Good night. Sir? my way of saying I think you're inspector material. Me? Do you know who did this? Everyone knows. Well, would you mind telling me then? Hey! Oi! He makes everyone's life a misery. Don't worry, the Peter Rogers of this world are in for a big shock. Gonna change the world, are you? No, just the estate. <laughs>